Welcome back to Casual Bias Rugby. 33 points to 7 in Brisbane. South Africa gets the first victory of the Rugby Championship 2024. Massive victory for South Africa. Obviously, you know, the odds were stacked against us in terms of the history between the two teams when we play in Australia. In Brisbane, only, I think it's only our fourth victory in, in our history in, in Brisbane. Like, since... 1971 I think was the first one and then our previous victory in Brisbane was in 2013 so it's absolutely massive for us to to get that victory but obviously we were the favorites going into this game um, if you look at if you look at the performance I mean the first half very dominant very dominant and then the second half it kind of felt like we got a bit complacent with it all um, that's just obviously from my opinion trying to keep it um, objective um, I thought we struggled with our with our clinical. We should be. I thought we should be a bit more clinical. Um, obviously, when you have a game that has that has so many opportunities, some opportunities are going to go begging. But like blatant try scoring opportunities was a bit frustrating not to see. Like um, what pops to mind is when Sasha Feinberg um, hit that gap, gave the ball to Vili. Vili struggled to get it under control. So obviously, he couldn't get the pass away to the two guys on the outside, which should have been a guaranteed try if he got that ball under control. And then shortly afterwards, we went wide and it just got but desperate, desperate. And I think it was a forward pass or a knock-on or something from uh, Peter Steff to Toy. So that's just like two big opportunities that went begging. If you look at the amount of lineouts that we had, five meters out and couldn't score from the line out. Obviously, I love the variation that we brought into the line out. That first try that Siakulisi scored was absolutely brilliant um, with like kind of two malls set up in, in one line out. But I kind of just want to see us do a proper normal line out where we use physicality to get over the line because it feels like every time we try the basic line out option, it just falls through the mud uh, for some reason or we let people in and they get the turnover or whatever. So we need to sort that out. But obviously, just to get into the game, I, I was super happy with the performance. Like, I'm, I'm going to be a bit critical at, at, at some points, and I think it's only fair that we are critical of the South African team. Um, I don't think it was all too doom and gloom for, for the Wallabies. Obviously, they got outmuscled and outplayed in the first half. They didn't show up for it at all. But then moving into the second half, like... The Wallabies were the dominant team for the first 15 minutes of it. South Africa came back and scored two tries back-to-back, -back, two very good tries. And then, um, obviously, we conceded the, the seven points when, when we were 13 men on the field. But let's give credit to, to the Wallabies in that second half. Like, obviously, you, we could feel South Africa shut down and we got complacent, which is a fair statement. But also, like the the Wallabies finally finally started to play some rugby. You could see their backline moving. They didn't kick kick away possession the whole time. I don't know what the game plan was in the first half. It was like we're not going to attack. We're just going to kick the ball away. Like it just didn't make sense to try and beat South Africa at South Africa's own game. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, very happy with the performance. I mean, just a couple of the standout players for, from a South African side was obviously Oxenchair was he was my man of the match. I know he only plays about 60 minutes, 50 minutes or whatever until the, the bomb squad comes on. But at scrum time, he was an absolute beast just rolling through people. <clears throat> He had the hands when it came to, it came to the um, to the back line. He, he found himself in the in the back line. That little uh, pop pass behind the back line or behind the the I don't even what, know what you call it. Like he found himself in first receiver a couple of times. He was the final pass that actually gave us that half break. He carried well. I just think Auxon G is on another level at the moment. Like if you think about form, oh my nose is so itchy. My apolo my apologies. Um, Peter Steffs do tackle obviously, just like always. Always a standout performer. Um, once again, found himself in in the in the lock position this weekend, and he had a brilliant game. It's he it, it just played the same rugby. He scored the tries. He had the runs. He tackled as always. It was just a brilliant game. Like Peter Steff to toy once again, the same as Auction Chair. Just just his form at the moment is absolutely scintillating. Obviously, he's a shout at the moment to even go for World Player of the Year. Um, I'm not too sure from when they do it. Like if you if you take into consideration the World Cup as well, like just how good he's been since he's come back from injury from last year. Like he's really gotten back into that <clears throat> 2019 form that that got him that that World Player of the Year in the first place. Um, I think Kubis Reinach kind of had a 50-50 game, like he struggled. Like I don't think we did him any favours really in the first half necessarily when it came to the breakdown. 
Um, like I don't think he got clean ball all the time, but he also made some silly mistakes. And then at other points I thought, okay, well, he was great here once again. So it was a very, very up and down performance from Kubis Reinach. But once again, the, the talking point, Sasha Feinberg, he looked like Marnie. He looked like Marnie <coughs> when he had that first kick, first kick at goal, totally scuffed it. Um, like <laughs> it was just a mess hit completely. But after that, he had an absolutely brilliant game. And I spoke to, to the boys on it on, on the WhatsApp group and I said, listen, like we all love Andre Pollard, but you can just see the difference it makes in the back line, how it moves when, when Sasha is that first receiver or the, or the interchanging between Sasha and, and Vili being the first receivers. You can see the creativity, the amount of attacking options that we had to really take on the, the Australian defence. And like obviously he created so many things. A, a lot of the times that, that skip pass or obviously the standout was, was the line break he made where he gave the ball to Vili that Vili struggled to control. Um, He's just so good. His kicking game is on point. My nose is absolutely killing me at the moment. Oh, Vili Leroux, I thought he had an absolutely brilliant game. Uh, how many times did he throw that skip pass? He threw the skip pass for, for Jesse Creel uh, to, to give us the overlap, for Jesse to get to hit the gap and, and make that, that line-out break for, for Kirtley Orange's try as well. Um, Jesse Creel, once again, brilliant game, as I just mentioned, um, kind of. Broke the, broke the line there with, with a couple of steps. He had a good game there. Solid in defence. Absolute brick wall. Um, and then obviously the, the bomb squad that came on. Um, Quagha Smith once again making his impact from the bench. That is the Quagha that we, that we know and love. Um, but yeah, I want to know what, what your opinion is on, on the match as a whole. Like, uh, I don't know if this is the right thing to say. But like, I kind of stressed in that second half for next week just to see that we, we, we kind of shut down, like we thought the game was done and dusted, which it kind of was, right? But I didn't want us to go and lay, lay down. I wanted us to put out the statement of getting 50 points past this um, this, this, Wallabies, this Wallabies outfit, because that's kind of the direction that the, that the game went in. And we just started to like completely shut down and, and get complacent. And I don't want us to go into the, that mindset going into the next game. Because if, if, if next weekend is played like the second half, of this one, I thought the Wallabies were the were the better team in the second half. Like they really had us on the ropes for for large parts of that game. Obviously, our, our defense held up, which is obviously positives to take from it. But I uh, I need to be hypercritical because obviously we 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 setting these crazy standards for for these games, and we don't want to struggle against the Wallabies and then having to go and play against the All Blacks. We need to get that consistency. We need to get <coughs> some momentum going. Um, but overall, obviously, I'm happy with the with the performance. One talking point that I actually want to bring up is Andrew Galloway decided to become the undertaker. Um, I, I don't have real, real issues with, with the refing or anything from this game. I thought Luke Pierce had a good game. But just once again, like the inconsistencies with it, like Andrew Galloway only getting a yellow card for that. No issue with it. I know Reinach fell on his head, but it wasn't really hard or, or anything like that. Obviously, it could have gone bad and that's why he got the yellow card. But then the inconsistency of it with... Jasper Visa being banned for six weeks for something way softer than that, but it's kind of the same thing. Like way softer, but Jasper Visa gets banned for six weeks and Andrew Kellaway just plays the rest of the game. It doesn't make sense to me. Like the inconsistency once again. And the only issue that I really had with, with Luke Pierce, obviously we got three yellow cards. I thought we should have got a yellow card way earlier. The same with, with Australia. I think at some point we had like five or six not rolling aways. And then we finally got the yellow card. Like, that, 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 that's, that's not acceptable. Because obviously Australia had 13 penalties conceded. They got the one yellow card and it was for, for the foul play. And I'm talking about 13 at the point that I heard the commentator say it. Like they said it's 13 penalties conceded. And I think it was at like 62 minutes or something. That is ridiculous amount without any penalties conceded. Especially if you look at how many were in the 22 of Australia. So that's the only issue that I have with the refing. I just thought I had to had to bring it up. But overall, I was very happy with with Luke Luke Pierce's performance. Um, good game, just a good game all around. I love the fact that that we saw how quick the game was played at. Like that was good to see. Um, you saw the people out on their feet, tired, and and it's a good viewing experience. So when you have a cleaner game, when there's less penalties and stuff conceded, so it's less stop start. Obviously, you'll have a better viewing experience. Like the game was quick paced; they didn't take long to get to the lineouts, didn't take long to get the scrums going. Um, so yeah, overall, 
I would actually want to to ask the Wallaby supporters in the, in the comment sections what you guys thought about the game and, and what's your expectation going into, into next weekend. Overall, happy with the performance, got our bonus point, decent point, points difference, would have wanted a bit more to be fair. But overall, basically it's done, had to get the victory. Obviously, bonus points matter a lot. So yeah, overall happy. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.